Everybody, it's Tommy here at Pikes Peak Signature Event, checking with 3457. That's Spitzer, uh, currently ranked really high right now as we're wrapping up qualification matches, so we can't wait to see how they do in playoffs. But how they got there is with a phenomenal machine and a great robot. We're going to give a full breakdown of this, but they got that dual uh, CT hand coming in. Uh, and I just watched them on the field, just a lot of control that this team has as they go through. Talk about their drive base and how they make that hang happen. There's a lot more to learn about this team. Let's learn about them here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Now to start out with the uh, bottom up here, your drive base is so important uh, to the overall strategy that you have. So talking about what you have and then what, uh, how it's so important with in regards to your strategy. So we have a 66 watt, uh, 450 RPM drive, which is connected to 2.75 inch wheels. So we can actually achieve that C tier hang on the horizontal bar. We have experimented with other wheels. We saw that this would be the most effective in terms of hang. And also our driver is very comfortable with how this drive works and he's able to cross the barrier effectively. So this is why we stuck with this drive. We're also able to climb up the vertical bar when coming for that C tier hang. So this is why we decided to go with this. Specific drive. From this type of wheel config, because you, you have you know these Omni wheels in front, right? And the, these here, do you uh, only go over the barrier in one direction or are you pretty comfortable going both ways? Because we have sleds in both the front and back, we are able to climb the barrier over effectively both ways. So that is something that we found when prototyping with different Awesome. Let's keep moving on. Uh, Shorio, talk to me about the uh, intake uh, that you have on here. Uh, one of the things when we were talking earlier is you've done a couple things that really help with scoring where it requires less steps. So I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, so we have a 600 RPM, two inch flex wheel intake. And what's special about our intake is that it actually lifts up when it hits the goal because it's banded down by rubber bands. And so when it lifts up, this bottom part with two standoffs will push the tri ball forward. And this is so useful for our team because it makes our driver code a lot easier. And then it's also really useful for our driver because it makes it easier for him to score without using extra controls to push the tri ball out. So when was that change actually made? Is this like a full rebuild coming into this event or when did you have, have that added? Uh, we made this rebuild about two months ago, starting January, and I think it was just because we had a lot of trouble in Hollywood with our control mechanism and trying to get the intake to work. So we just wanted to really simplify it, and that's why we just did the banded method to push the tri ball out a lot easier. So what I want to ask you, based on that, then looking at your your past designs for it, how many more cycles are you able to get in? You know, have you found by having this type of config? Um, I think we're really happy with this intake, so moving forward, at least in two weeks for states, we'll probably continue with this design. It's been proving to be effective here, and we've scored well with it so far. Uh, Anish, let's talk about the uh, uh, hanging mechanism we have uh, for it. We mentioned dual C-climb uh, for that, so I'd love to hear more about that. And then uh, your autonomous is really uh, on par as well, too, and i really love to see uh, you just hear more about what went into having such a great autonomous for your team. Yeah, so for our hang, uh, we have a dual C-tier hang over here. And so the first type of hang we do is the horizontal bar one. This is the sort of like quicker hang we do in matches where we're running out of time. And um, pretty much all it is is we drive up to the bar like this. Uh, the bar comes over here. And using a 100 RPM motor geared 1 to 7, we have enough torque um, to pull the whole robot in and get a C tier. And to get the C tier on the horizontal bar, we realized we had to use the 2.75 inches wheels. And that's why we ran that drive base over other ones. And um, that's allowed us to like get those five extra points, which often help you in a lot of matches where it's very close. One of the things I want to ask you is a lot of teams that we see that have this type of hanger are running like a PTO off of it as well too. Um, what was your decision to just have its own individual motor and not run like a PTO? So with the PTO, we realized that the trade-off with the weight you gain from the PTO and um, how like how much more torque and speed you get from it, it really isn't worth it. And we discovered that through the usage of bands, we can make up for the like sort of a little bit less torque that you get from the one motor. And so what we did on this robot to ensure we could hang is make it as light as possible using nylon screws wherever we could, along with keeping it like really as compact and like simple and minimalistic as possible. And then this also allowed us to um, do the vertical hang, which wasn't something we had initially. Then we realized, oh wait, we have enough torque, might as well like add a 
uh, vertical hang to it and see if it works. And so with this one, what we did is um, we realized we could just move the arm forward onto the bar. And then rather than other teams who just leave it forward and then drive into the bar, we pull our arm down onto the bar and then pull it back up. And realize this makes for a much more consistent and cleaner um, vertical hang when compared to just driving straight into the pole and hoping you clamp on like that. Talking about that match strategy, and then uh, let's go into both your autonomous and your uh, driver strat overall, and why you've been so successful so far, especially here at Bike Speed. So for our autonomous, uh, generally we run a few different types. We have uh, one for qualification and some for um, uh, elims. So for qualification matches, we run a safe uh, autonomous, which won't get messed up by our opponents by going to the center, and that allows us to be really consistent in getting the win point. As we've gotten it six out of seven times so far, or sorry, seven out of eight times so far with that and another thing we do for that is we also help our alliance to make sure they have a, at least an auton to push a ball into the goal and through that we're able to get autonomous win points and rank higher and in order to make our autonomous more efficient and effective we utilize different control mechanisms like PIDs and sensors like uh, the inertial sensor we have in the center of our robot and um, for how that plays into our match strategy after autonomous, as we usually run the close side or match side autonomous, we always deposit tri balls into the alley in our during our autonomous. So what we do is we quickly run back, touch the bar, and bowl two balls and funnel them all in as quick as we can. Then from there, based on who our alliance is, we change our strategy. So if our alliance like knows how to bowl, knows how to do single balls, and they can score pretty well, we have them stay on the right side match the bar so that they can score as efficiently as possible while being protected but because it's our bar and we run a more defensive strat or we do it the opposite way if our opponent, if our alliance is more uh, defensive. So your last match uh, that we saw, you were just playing with 3 uh, three 4 3x Chris. Uh, uh, the other alliance had a lot of unfortunate yeah. circumstances, but like, how was that strategy coming into there? What, what were that discussions like? So for that match, we knew 3 4 3x was a really good scoring robot, and we knew that they could score with bowling and singles uh, really well. So um, for our strategy, we decided that we would try defending the bowling and singles by going towards the left side, and they would stay on the right bar and do match loads as much as they could. But then in the match, like as we saw, like both of our opponents tipped over, and we realized, oh, there's no really, there's not really a point to like defending at that point. So then we just adapted and kept scoring. Yeah, I mean, on your end, I think very, very clean match uh, for that. So I really like that a lot. Uh, let's pass over to Rishi. Let's talk about uh, the uh, robot sleds and the wall riders that you're doing for that. Man, wall riders, uh, you know, a few other teams we interviewed. It always seems like the top teams are doing that. I don't know why everybody else isn't doing that. Uh, so, but just talk to me about that and the sleds on your bot too. Yeah. So for the wall riders here, uh, we have one on each side. We just use a pulley, and we mainly only have them in the front. As for bowling, when we uh, come across the field perimeter along the uh, along the pole, so that it's much smoother to uh, get the trap balls into the goal, and for and they were like really useful as well. And for the back and front slides, we our back slides are very consistent. Uh, we use them a lot, and for the front slides, we use them a lot to. Uh, get up on the max load bar so that we can feed the trial ball into the intake and uh, we can climb the barrier also with them as well. It's been very effective uh, for you so far. Another thing that's been really effective are your wedge wings that you're doing as well to now. So talk to me about uh, that overall process. When did you add these on and what results have you seen out of it? Yeah, we added these a couple months ago, maybe like one or two months ago. And this has been really effective for our strategy when we're trying to be offensive because or defensive actually. So when our opponents are mash loading, so when our opponents are match loading, right, they'll shoot their balls over, but then we used to have a blocker, but we decided not to and change it to this because instead of having an extra part, we could just add wedge rings and then we can push whatever they, whatever tri balls they push over to our side, we can push it, I mean, to their side, we can push them right into our side and then right into the goal and score quite a bit of points. Um, they're also quite effective, uh, just pushing them around, just for control. Yeah, that's what we talked about before. I mean, your team has so much control on the field, and that's really, to me, what makes top-tier teams and champions this event. Uh, so 3457, that's Spitzer. Thank you very much for talking about your, about your body. I think there's a lot of great things that teams can take uh, from this as well. So we wish you best of luck here at Pikes Peak, and uh, keep up the great work, guys. This is an awesome machine. Thanks a All lot. Right, thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following.
The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.